was a chaotic situation as a Rise TV correspondent, Mary Chinda, got harassed while attempting to interview some family members of the over 361 people who were abducted at the Abuja Kaduna train station about 10 days ago. The crew, however, did speak to one of the family members whose sisters remain in the custody of the terrorists. We're trying to protect ourselves. That is why we're even in the train in the first place. We didn't take our car because we're aware of the kidnapping of the road. And we, we, and we all feel safe with the train. And we believe government is protecting us through the train. And here we are. Here we are. It's very sad. It's really a national disaster to me. And it's really a national embarrassment to me. Please, the government comes to the head of those that are alive. We, we, we are sorry for those that have lost their lives. We, we, we sympathize with the family. We sympathize with the family of those that have lost their lives. We sympathize with the family of those that are in the hospital. We sympathize with. But those that are alive, at least bring back bring them. We're now being joined by our ICE correspondent, Mary Chinda. Mary, thank you for joining us on Newsday. I'd like to ask, uh, it's good to see you. I'd like to start by asking, uh, first of all, how you are following that unfortunate situation. And was, do you, would you think that was an attempt to silence the criticisms which the vo uh, government has been facing based on its poor response to this attack? Well, obviously, there couldn't be better words to express what just played out with um, the officials of the Federal Ministry for Transportation, who, um, if not for my doggedness, would not even let any member of the media speak with um, families of these um, persons that have been ab abducted. Now, um, these people w have been here for quite a while, um, over an hour. They were even here when the Minister of, uh, for, of for State for Transportation um, had actually stepped in and they had made attempts to, you know, um, 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 deliver their case, uh, make their cases known to the minister, hoping that there could be some kind of empathy and the minister um, and, and the ministry could actually speak with them. But of course, they did not get um, the, the, the reaction that they thought they were going to get from the minister or from um, members of the ministry. And then uh, the press, members of, of the press were actually almost being stopped from speaking to them. In fact, when I had to try to speak with them, when the Rice TV tried to speak with them, they had insisted that if I wanted to continue with the interview, then I would not be doing that at the premises. In other words, there was no need in interviewing them. And if there was anything at all that um, the media um, is supposed to do, it is just taking the, the side of the government, just taking the press briefing uh, by the Minister of, uh, of, of, of State for Transportation, uh, which is actually going on currently. But of course, uh, on insistence and insist uh, on and, uh, trying to, you know, make it make my uh, my case very firm with the um, staff of the ministry, I was allowed to get to interview them. Well, the person that you just found uh, uh, speaking right there has two of her blood sisters. Two of her blood sisters currently being abducted. Most of the people that you see here have either family members who are abducted or, you know, uh, uh, or friends who are abducted. In fact, one of the persons who will be speaking to you uh, very shortly has her mum, who is over 60 abducted currently. I mean, that, that woman has got hypertension, she has high blood pressure issues and all of that, and she is in the custody of this terrorist. I'm just going to be quickly joined in right now by uh, Madame Yusuf, who um, has two of her sisters abducted. Tell us about, it's been 10 days, yes. over 10 days. What, how has your family been able to process the fact that two of your sisters, who you say left your own house, you know, to catch um, the train to uh, Kaduna are still being abducted. Good afternoon, fellow Nigerians watching out there. My name is Idaya Yusuf. Um, it's been 10 days we had the train um, saga, the bomb, and it's been very crazy on the part of the family. Two of my sisters are among those that are abducted from the train. We all know what happened in the train. We had people that lost their lives. And of course, we have um, people that were injured and still dying in the hospital. We at least sympathize with the family of those that have lost their life and those that are injured. May God heal them. For those of us that our family members are abducted, I have two of my sisters there, from the same parents with me. In fact, they left my house on that same day to board the train by suspicion, only for us to find out that the train, there was a bomb. And since then, it took us three days to even know where they are. Honestly, it was hell. 
it was all living for three days without even know where your loved ones are. Then after the three days, the kidnapper called. They reached out to us to tell us that they are under their captivity. And ever since then, we never heard from the kidnapper or the government. All we're hearing is just rumor. The government is negotiating. This is happening. That is happening. It's just mere rumor. We're not talking about ourselves that it's tiny. We're not really know we don't really know what is really happening. We don't know what is happening. We really need to reach out to the Ministry of Transportation, which oversees the National Railway Corporation. Because, of course, we believe that our family members board the train going to Kaduna. And we believe it's the responsibility of the NRC to take them to their various destinations. So we tried to reach out to the, you know, to the NRC chairm, uh, MD. We found out that it's not even based, it's not, the headquarter is not in Abuja, it's in Lagos. So we now decided to go to the Ministry of Transportation. On getting there today, we learned that there was a breast breathing at the radio house. And I said, okay, let's take advantage of the breathing and meet with the Honorable Minister there. Unfortunately, the Honorable Minister, Ruth Miyamichi, was not here, but the Minister of State, um, Mr. Lassaraki, is, um, we saw her and we tried to, you know, from the beginning we tried talking to her. She just walked away. You know, not showing any sympathy or empathy. But later, she sent some of our staffs and the permanent secretary of the ministry to call us to the leader, that's myself and Mr. Akim, to see her. So we, we went in, we spoke with her. She assured us that the ministry have been doing all and the government have been doing a lot to rescue the, the victims and all of that. So we, this question keeps, you know, ringing down our mind. How? What is the process? What are the things being done? And what is already been done already? She said the government cannot tell us, but they are looking for a way that they will, you know, rescue the victims of the abducted victims. We're not satisfied with the answers given to us. Because at this, at this, you know, at this juncture that we are now, honestly, we want a sincere and a truth answer. We can't sleep. We can't eat. We can't concentrate. We are fasting in the month of Ramadan. We can't even break our fast properly. We can't eat saur. We want to eat every time we cry. We have an aged father. My father is about 89 years old. He's, 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 in, he's living in Kodwina. This man has been wailing, not crying. He has been wailing. He has not been himself. We have been managing his health even before now. But now you can imagine. The old world can imagine what this man is going through. Among the kidnappers, we have have a brother here that has a, a seven month, uh, I mean, a seven month old sister, seven month old, I mean, pregnant, pregnant um, sister with the kidnappers. We have people that have aged mothers with the kidnappers. We have people that have, you know, um, people that have underlying ailments like hypertension, like diabetics without medication. We believe our prayers is what keep them to this time, to for 10 days without medication. So we're appealing and we're requesting to government to please be sincere with us, to be truthful to us, to tell us what is the problem and tell us how they negotiate. Because the Obviously, the kidnappers don't even want to talk to us. They said they don't have any business with us from the video released yesterday. That the government know what they want. So if the government know what they want, we are appealing to the old Nigerian. Today, of course, it's us. Tomorrow, it could be you. It could be any other person. This is not a fight for us. It's a fight for the general. Okay, so, so, so let me cut you a little bit, uh, uh, Madam Yusuf. Now tell me, um, when the kidnappers called you, right, did they talk about money? Did they say how much exactly? What else was the conversation? I mean, you did tell me off camera that after they called you, the lines were switched off. I mean, you tried to call back and the lines were switched off. Could you tell us about that? Yeah, the kidnapper actually called. I think the, the main reason for calling majority of the people because it's a storm story. They called only once. And what they want to know, maybe for us to just know that our family members are with them. Did they say how much they wanted? No, they did not. They did not demand for any ransom. They only come for us to confirm that our, our, our sisters are with them. That's all. They have not called us ever since then. They've not called back. They've not made any negotiation. They've not made any demand. What we hear is that, and of course, what we hear and what we see yesterday from the video sent after releasing the um, MD of Bank of Agriculture is that they, well, they, they don't want our money. The government know what they want, so the government should give them what they want. So we're appealing. If the government know what they want, they should give them what they want. We've lost a lot of lives already in the, in the train. We've lost so many lives, and so many are still in the hospital. Some of them even died. Somebody even died among those in the hospital yesterday. So how many lives are we going to lose? lose? So please, we're begging go uh, government, please, they should see our old age parents, they are suffering from one ailment, seeing their children in the hand of kidnappers. They should see a old, they should please look beyond the way they are looking at their sentence and look at a seven month old pregnant woman for a whole 10 days without changing clothes or a medication or anything. They should look at that and sympathize with we, the members of the family. They should look at a old woman with sis not having hypertension and diabetes. They should look at the all and the other ailments that we're going through. Please, the government should come to our rescue and rescue our, our, our family members.
Thank you very much. Well, uh, that's 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 the situation from these uh, family members of those persons who have been abducted in the last 10 to 11 days right now. It is just one thing that they are demanding. Let the government get these persons that have been abducted out of the ha terrorist hideout to get to reunite with their families. That is the message, the same message yesterday, the same message from these people today, and it will be the same message tomorrow up until they are able to reunite with their families. Oh, Mary Chinda, thank you so much for reporting. That was a very heartbreaking interview, but we do hope that the federal government is listening and will act. Thank you very much, Mary, for reporting.